gentlemen, and welcome to another edition of The Democratic View. I'm the hostess. My name is Phyllis Italiano. I've been doing this show an awfully long time. And with me today, I have a very special guest. His real name is Santa Claus, but we're going to call him, <laughs> we're going to call him Dan Becker right now. Uh, here you are, Mr. Chris Kingwell. And it's very nice to see you. And by the way, the show you are in, the 34th Street, Miracle on 34th Street, is fantastic. If you haven't seen it, and if you can get a chance to see it before it closes, by all means, I'm coming back with my granddaughter to see it. When? On the matinee. OK. So, so tonight we have, hold on, 7 o'clock. And then tomorrow is the matinee and I guess 7 o'clock, and then Sunday is just a matinee. Yeah, I'm going to see that matinee with my granddaughter. I don't want my granddaughter to miss this show. It is so wonderful, and you are terrific in it, playing that my favorite c character of all time, Santa Claus. <laughs> I keep asking Santa Claus for things, but he doesn't seem to listen to me. <laughs> well, you didn't ask me yet. <laughs> anyway, Dan, what I am interested in, you are actually from Montauk. And uh, what I'm interested in finding out is a little bit about who you are. So tell us something about where you were born, where you were raised, where you went to school, what you chose to do with your life, and how you, did you get into acting? Because right. I know about acting. Right. So uh, I was born in Newark, New Jersey, uh, then moved to the suburbs in the 60s. Uh, my parents and my grandmother were all doctors. Um, and I started, uh, my sisters were singers, and I felt as the youngest that no one was paying any attention to me, <laughs> so I started singing and playing guitar and, and that kind of thing. Uh, I was sent off to boarding school because I was too busy singing and playing guitar, and uh, <laughs> they said, uh, you know, they didn't see a bright future the way I was going. So <laughs> it's the truth. And uh, at that boarding school, again, I was a singer, and they decided they thought I ought to get on stage and do some acting, which I had never done. Um, I went to college in, at Lafayette in eastern Pennsylvania. They, they didn't, uh, they had a small theater, and I did a few shows. Um, and uh, I went around the country uh, auditioning for master's programs in, art, in uh, theater. And I got into everyone except Yale uh, I, because I, they, I w had no training, none. Nobody ever taught me how to audition. Nobody taught me what to pick. Nobody taught me what to do. And yet I still got into these things and with scholarships. And then I decided it was really a stupid idea that I would be in my father's pocket for the rest of my life. And so that was the end of acting. Uh, I, I practiced for 15 years medicine in, in uh, Mobile, Alabama. And Mobile, Alabama? I know. I, that's a whole story. But yes, <laughs> there I was in Mobile, Alabama. And I've lived around the South. I lived in yeah. Atlanta, Georgia. Yeah. And well, Atlanta, Georgia makes Mo is, it looks like a very advanced compared to Mobile, Alabama. <laughs> but in any case... That's all right. I was also in West Virginia, too. <laughs> in any case, uh, I came out here, I moved out here and uh, after I left uh, Alabama, and uh, I took some guys fishing. I'm sort of a very mediocre fisherman, but we go a lot. And uh, some of the guys on the boat said, hey, we're taking an acting class. And I said, you know, I used to act sort of, kind of. What kind of class? And they said, well, with this guy, Michael Disher. And I said, do you think he'll let me into the class? And, uh, and, uh, they, and he said, OK, he would. And I showed up for the class. And Michael's first uh, question to us was, what are you doing here? And he went around the room. And, and I, when he got to me, I said, I really have no idea what I'm doing here. I don't have the slightest idea what I'm doing. <laughs> I actually used some four-letter words to say I had no effing idea what I'm doing here. <laughs> and uh, he uh, began putting me in shows. And uh, 
So I did shows with him many, and this, this is my, one of my favorites, Miracle on 34th Street. We've done Christmas Carol. We've done Wonderful Life. Uh, I did some stuff at Guildhall uh, with Harris Eulin and Josh. I took a class with Alec Baldwin. and uh, um, So that's how it happened. It was so uh, it, just a hobby. And, uh, and here I am having grown a back of beard, which Sunday night it goes. <laughs> and, uh, and this is a great show. And it's one of my favorites anyway. And, uh, and it has lots of wonderful music. It, it is a great show. And if, any, if you haven't had a chance to see it, folks, try to get to see it because it, it is lovely. I must admit, I'm, I, you know, I'm coming back with my granddaughter to see it because it's, it's just enchanting. And uh, I, I, I wanted to ask uh, Michael Vischer how come he chose this one? Because we had done the others. We'd, or, we'd done Christmas Carol so many times, and we'd done Wonderful Life. And so we were sort of both scratching our heads. And of course, I said, gee, you know, Miracle on 34th Street's my favorite. And he found a script uh, that had music. And uh, uh, there it was. He yeah, chose he that one because it's sort of the, the, the triad. You know, it's an old movie with Marina Hara and John Payne. Absolutely, and one of my favorites, and uh, um, Edmund Gwen plays Chris Kringle, I and know. you can believe I've studied Edmund Gwen and, and, <laughs> and trying to base everything, because I think people want to see that again, and uh, I saw a TV movie with McDonald Carey and uh, Teresa Wright, and, and this very famous character actor, but his name slipped in. It wasn't, and it, the lines are the same, but it wasn't charming. Yeah. Uh, but uh, you know. This yeah, there's something about that f film oh. that almost makes you believe in Santa Claus. Absolutely. You know, well, you mean, what do you mean? You're saying you don't believe in Santa Claus? <laughs> I'm sitting right here. Oh, Dan, I definitely believe in you. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I've seen you on the stage too many times not to know that you are really terrific, you know. But I doubt if you're going to leave a present at my door. <laughs> <laughs> well, you got to ask. <laughs> I oh, have. We have this little girl in the show uh, uh, also, uh, and uh, uh, she's also done a great job. And as I said, the songs really grew on us. Oh, the songs are just fabulous. They're great songs. And we you know it's got the commercials like any radio show. And uh, uh, I'd say, I'd say I'm very happy with it. And I think Michael is, which is. Yes. He's yes. very tough on himself and tough on us. But this one, he's happy. And, and so now when you have to learn lines, I mean, I know as uh, being the younger daughter of a very famous actress, from the time I was a little kid, I was cueing her and helping her to practice. So uh, do you have s someone who helps you to cue? Well, or How do you learn your line? What, here's what happened with this one. It's, as, as in all radio shows from the 40s and 50, early 50s or 40s, mostly they read, read while they were doing it. Yes. So that's what's happening with this show. I. I'm not because I had the script longer than everybody else because I was really into it. And uh, so uh, I don't need to look at the script as much. But everybody else has got the script in front of them. Oh, really? Yeah. So there's no real lines to have to learn because that's the hard part. To memorize. Yes. Yeah, yes. I did because it just, I think it makes the performance better. Yes, you're right. Maybe that's what makes you so enchanting on stage, because you are enchanting on stage. I mean, really and truly, at the end of the show, I wanted to say to you, you know what I'd like? <laughs> Please bring me, <laughs> you know. But uh, reality kind of hit me in the head, so I didn't do it. But uh, Well, don't give up. <laughs> that's, a good, that's a good point. Don't give up. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> Wonderful. Uh, so we don't have all that many more times to go see this show so if they two tomorrow and one on Sunday yeah it, it's really worth seeing and especially for uh, kids because it's 
it's so enchanting that it gives you a sort of magical feeling about, about this whole thing called Christmas. Because most of the times, Christmas is just, you know, got to do the cards, got to do the decorations, you know. You know, you go by my house right now, and it's all lit up with all kinds of decorations outside. You know, I, I do that all the time. But the real part of Christmas is the magic of, of the idea of what Christmas is about, the giving to each other and, and hoping for the best in the next year. Well, you know, we've had a really rough year and a half or two years as a country and as a, as a community. And uh, our hope was this would bring a little, you know. I and mean, that's exactly what it does. Cheer and magic. Yes. Because uh, we've, been, we've had some tough time. That's exactly what it does when you're in that audience. And uh, it was amazing that uh, we do wear our masks while we're in the, in the yes. audience. Yes. Now, all of the cast is vaccinated. And the, and the support staff, the sound guys and, 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 and the lighting guy. But Southampton, who owns the building, the village, they don't require vaccination, so we had to go along with them. Oh, really? And, and, and it's, by the way, the, the, the play is at the Southampton Cultural Center. Yes, ne next to Agawam Park, yeah. Yeah. Uh, but so that's what makes it, uh, oh, really? So you don't have to wear a mask in Southampton? Okay, the cast, which is va who is vaccinated, as soon as we're off stage, we do, and the audience has to. But there's no requirement for vaccination in that building. Really? I don't know why anybody would be vaccinated. I was the first in line. I mean, really, I'm not kidding. I went up to uh, Stony Brook. To have oh, why, there. people don't vaccinate? Yeah, well, I don't know. I don't. I don't get well, it. Well, that's that's a, a topic that we could cover another time. <laughs> I, 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 it's. Crazy. I'm shocked by it. Yeah, but I don't think you want to discuss that right here. No. So uh, now, tell me, are you going to continue with this kind of thing? You're going to, con to keep doing acting. Well, it all depends on Michael and his health. Uh, there aren't that many opportunities. Uh, uh, there's quag. Uh, I, I don't think we'll be doing any more uh, stuff at the Southampton Cultural Center. Um, so uh, time will tell. Well, aren't you capable of producing and directing? Absolutely not. And I cannot tell you how many times people ask me, and I think it's so funny. So when are you going to direct? I go, I don't know a darn thing about directing. I, I, I don't have the mentality for it. Really? Yeah, really. I don't know. I've been around it all my life. It doesn't, since I was a little kid. I know. And it uh, doesn't seem so complicated. And I've been with some of some really great directors. I know. On sets, you know, including my brother-in-law, Mel Brooks, you know. But uh, it's not you have to have kind of like a vision of the play, of the piece that you're working on, and and what you what you want to bring forward in in the substance of the of the dialogue and the piece that you're working with. So I'm guiding you, <laughs> encouraging you to try it, because you know it's it's a good step to do. Do you actually, I mean, I noticed that you did not read as much, although there were some people who, who knew their lines pretty well. Uh, do you have somebody who helps you cue you and stuff like that, or you just memorize? Just memorize. You just memorize, wow. Does it interfere with your daily work, though? Well, my work, you mean medical work? Yeah. Well, all I, well. What I do now is I travel to hospitals around the United States that are in need. There are so many in need of, of, uh, of uh, medical specialists. And so uh, when they call me, which is frequently, if I'm not doing anything uh, and 
practice. I go and I travel to hospitals around the country. Really? Really. Wow, that must be difficult to do in this kind of time, to get on a plane and go somewhere and work at a strange hospital that you don't Yeah. I guess it might have been, but I've done it a few times, and this doesn't feel too difficult to me. I, you know, the key thing is to get the nursing staff and the support staff to believe in you and uh, trust you, uh, that you know what you're doing, and, uh, and to treat them well. Wow. And to feed them. <laughs> I can understand that. <laughs> They once said, Dr. Becker, when you leave, what are we going to do? They said, lose weight. Because <laughs> <laughs> I bring them a lot of food. <laughs> but you live in Montauk. Yes. That's a great place, Montauk. The end. Yep. Yeah, I know. I, I swim at Gurney's during the, during the winter time. And now they don't allow that. I know. It took that whole part of my life away. I don't know what I'm going to do. Same here. I was hoping you were going to tell me. Because, uh, I mean, I, I'm jumping in the water. Uh, that there. was absolutely my favorite exercise. And then, uh, what, a year or two ago, they still were letting you do it. And then it shut down, and they don't allow it, except for, I guess, people who own a property there or are staying at the hotel. Really? I haven't looked into it well, yet. Well, trust me, you ain't going to be happy. You know, they don't allow it anymore. I'll have to talk to Lou Monty about that. He doesn't own it anymore. I know he doesn't. I think he's got pulled. <laughs> wow, that's terrible. Terrible. It really got me through the winters. Yeah, me too, because, you know, I, I, I swim in, they call it, you know, Gardner's Bay, but I call it Phyllis's Bay. Uh, but, I mean, I start really... Um, I would say first, second week in April. And my last swim this year was November the 14th. Yeah, I'm not, a, and I never was an ocean swimmer. I was always a pool swimmer. No, the, I'm, I'm a bay swimmer. Bay swimmer, I meant. Yeah, bay is not, uh, is not ocean. No, Actually, sure. the ocean is, they say, warmer than the bay at this point. But I, 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 don't, I, I don't swim when I'm in the ocean. When I'm in the ocean, I'm trying to protect my life, <laughs> you know, the ocean. Get knocked around a lot. Yeah, yeah. But, uh, so you, you're you not going to be able to swim this year. I, I haven't checked it out. Or yet. last year. I don't remember last year. I think I had, they said to me, you have to join for a whole year. I did. And then they, but with the COVID, they didn't let you do it. And then. Last check, they wouldn't let you swim. Unless oh, you dear, you're breaking my heart. Well, m my heart broke, yeah. So the only thing left is to act. That's the only thing that's going to Travel, I'm going to travel. You're going to travel? Yeah. To where? Just the hospitals or? No, in world travel. Well, I know I, I like to travel too, but I don't know about traveling. I think that's just. That's as risky as going in a pool. I'm throwing the dice. Yeah, some people I know are going places like, uh, you know, different islands. And I don't know. We'll, we'll see what happens. We'll see. And what about your acting career? Are you going to continue with that? At the moment, I think this will be our last show, my last show, and I'm very proud of it. Uh, I don't know what other opportunities are going to arise. Would you like to continue on with acting? It depends on the play and, and the people. The problem with some of these theaters, they're very far away. You know, you finish a rehearsal 9.30 at night, and you've got a long ride home. Well, from Southampton to Montauk, it is a long ride. Yeah, but look at the others, Quag, uh, uh, North Fork, it's too much driving. You got to get a local cast. That's what you have to do. And it's not quite. I know uh, somebody who comes from Shelter Island, as a matter of fact. I know who that is. And she's very <laughs> good in the show. 
Yes, I know. I know. He's really good. Yeah. But, uh, you know, when you get that bite, the acting bug, when you get bit by that bug, it's very hard to give that up. It really is. I, I know, although I never got, thank God, I never got bit by that bug. I preferred the classroom where my audience couldn't walk away. They had to listen to everything I ever Nobody said. Nobody walks out on Dan Becker. They run. <laughs> That's not true, Dan. I've seen you too many times on, on, on the stage, and you are a wonderful actor, really a wonderful actor. And uh, I, it, it, it shocks me that you didn't do it as a career. No, and no training. Nothing. Yeah. No. You never did act a studio or Nothing. anything like that. No. So it's just a natural thing. I guess. Yeah. No, I never did any of that stuff. Really? No. Well, you certainly managed to do it well. Thank you. Without without the kind of training. Uh, uh, you know training that I. I know my sister had with the people that she worked with, and uh, you know it was quite strenuous. And you know I was always by her side while she did that kind of stuff. But uh, if I had a, if I was doing a good play and somebody was doing a good play and it was a good part for Dan Becker, would you take it? Yes. <laughs> And that's that's the answer, and and it manages to not interfere with the rest of your life because I know go, even traveling from Montauk to that's the hardest part. Yeah, I know. I mean, it's I, I, to, to me just going to see that show uh, in at Southampton. And you live where? I live right around here. Well, still in Montauk. Right. Beach and traffic. Yeah, well, I know how to go below twenty. Seven, you know, so I don't hit quite the traffic that other people do, but uh, it it still is well over an hour to get there, you know, no doubt about it. And you're you're coming from Montauk, you know, the end, and that must be quite a trip. You must be exhausted at the end of the evening. Exhausted. Yeah. That's all right. <laughs> this show's fun. I'm glad we're doing it. So you, 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 but you didn't sleep so good last night, remember? No. <laughs> you probably were worried about doing a show like this. You know. I don't know what it was. Uh, but uh, so you're going to continue on with your career as a doctor mm -hmm. and an actor if parts come up that you like, that you're willing to work on. OK, well, we have to find some good producers and directors to do some different shows. I've seen you in quite a few, and I know how good you are. You're very versatile. Thank you so much. Yeah. Well, it's not a thank you. It's, it's the truth. I'm, I'm not allowed to thank you. <laughs> yeah, you can thank me, but I mean, I'm, I'm really saying the truth because I, ha I know acting. You know, you know, I, Lee Strasberg used to come to my house in Fire Island. You know, so I know all about that kind of stuff. And uh, you've got it. Thank you so much. You, you've got it. And I'm, it's unfortunate that you're not going to be able to, or so far, until the next part comes up and the next play comes up. And you decide that, oh, well, maybe I'll do that. And you don't have a big problem learning lines either. Not yet. <laughs> Actually, it's very good for your brain to do that kind of thing. Well, good luck. And thank you and, so and much, and thank you for having me here. Well, I, I, I just hope that the people who see this, and I'll have it on next week, uh, will be able to have the opportunity to get to see the show, because it really is charming. It really is. I mean, I wouldn't be going back with my granddaughter if, if I didn't think that it wasn't a, a absolutely charming show to do. And you people do such a great job. Thank you. And uh, good luck. Keep up your acting. Keep up your medical career. <laughs> Be good.
I'm sure that pays the bills, and that's always what's good to have something way to pay the bills. All right, Dan. Thank you so much for having me. Oh, you're welcome. You're welcome. And we are just about to say good night. I know you're on your way to go to Southampton and, and get started thinking about that mental preparation. I don't know if you do it, but I know people sometimes do that kind of thing before they do a show, you know, sort of gear themselves. I know when I'm coming here, I won't even talk on the phone to anybody. Wow. Yeah, no, I, I have to think about what I'm, what I'm doing, you know, I'm sure you do too. Well, good luck. And thank you very much for coming. We appreciate it.